Hey everybody, thanks for coming back to the Ham Radio Crash Course. I am Josh, KI6NAZ. Today we are going to be looking at the KM4 ACK Half Wave NFED Antenna. This is a great little portable antenna. It's also a kit, so you get a little bit of experience with soldering if you're new to that, and it's a lot of fun. So without further ado, let's get started. So this is what showed up in my house. I want to say a big thank you to Jason, KM4ACK, check him out on YouTube. Obviously well known for his uh, really, really cool build a pie script that we've used on my channel before, working on Raspberry Pis. Really, really smart um, stuff he's doing, really, really cool. Anyway, here's the, the kit. Looks like we've got a winder. It's pretty thick, 3D printed material, looks like PLA. And you can see here it's got a toroid mount point. And sure, you could probably put some uh, zip ties through here. And the back side is the 49 to 1 transformer. So this is most likely a end fed half wave antenna. Shows you how to wire this up. It's got counting wraps, what to do with the, the coil, um, a wire braid type of thing you need to do. And then you're going to have some kind of thing. Uh, we'll, we'll just walk through it. The electronics bundle comes with the wire, so that's really cool. So that looks like uh, maybe 20 gauge wire. Looks like, ooh, very nicely done. It's got a pre um, set up eye hole for mounting it, the antenna to whatever you want to tie off to, and a eye connector, terminal connector for connecting to the antenna. That's pretty cool. Looks like there is a dog bone insulator. Well, that was a pretty cool kit so far. <laughs> Nicely done. There is your BNC connector, which I'm guessing goes right there. Notice that the BNC connector is flat on one side, actually both sides, so it should slide in like that. So you come off directly from it. That's my guess, not positive. And we have three zip ties which are for holding the toroid in place some magnet wire another connector for crimping and then obviously the uh, wing nut that's going to be used to mount the antenna together and some extra washers now I, i'm not exactly sure what i'm supposed to do uh, with some of this stuff to be honest I have built a 49 to 1 unun before. I've also done a 9 to 1 unun. Oh, be very careful. We've got a capacitor here. That's obviously here, a 100 picofarad capacitor. And here is our toroid. And that'll mount something like that. Okay. Well, I was initially curious if we were going to have two different lengths of wire for the yellow line and the green line. It is obviously to me that it is all supposed to be this magnet wire. So let's kind of unwind some of this. So we're going to need a bit of this to get over to the BNC. So I'll start right here wrapping. Okay, this goes back to the ground side. This is high quality magnet wire. Yeah, this is nice wire, Jason. It uh, comes off really easy. It's uh, really easy to take the your angle cutters here and just scrape the paint off. That's really simple. Nice, look at that, okay, cool. And we'll do the same over here. So we're gonna need, again, we need to do two passes through, two loops. So I'm gonna start here. So here's the bottom, like that. That's one, that's two. And already I have a major problem. This is just not gonna be long enough to make the run. Just not gonna be long enough. See, if you leave me on my uh, own devices, I, I, will, I will guarantee I will screw up. So we're gonna double the length of this um, wire here. Should be more than enough, so I'm not worried about it. 
All right, so I'm gonna take this length here we've got and I'm gonna double it. So I know Jason asked me to give him some feedback. Um, I would say for, for dummies like me um, to go ahead and include, what he would recommend would be the lengths of wire to use uh, for the different parts of this. That would probably be very helpful. Okay, something like that. All right, let's continue the wrapping. So I'm gonna open this up a little bit, unravel some like that, and we'll continue. So this is three. Four. Let's do the count. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So every time it passes through the inner hole, that's one pass. So it's gonna go over the top and down and back through, no kinks. Do not let it kink like that. Try to make these decently tight, nine. Again, go in there and, and really force it on the, force it around the outside there, 10. All right, so we got a wound up toroid. Make sure these are all decent. Mine's kind of ugly. We'll space them out a little bit. So we're gonna pass the BNC through like that. We're gonna put the lock washer down. I'm gonna bend this uh, ground thing up a little bit. Something like that. Okay, we got BNC connected through here. So I feel like the best way to do this is just to attach the capacitor towards this end because that's where all the soldering is going to be anyway. So if we position it something like that, we know that this part goes to the TX side. So we are going to cut it probably to get it a bit closer, something like that. Um, and then we're going to connect these both to ground and one leg of this is going to have to connect to the, the capacitor and we'll figure out which one. It's going to be the opposite of this guy. So this is the yellow wire and we need to make it match to the, uh, the ground line. Okay. So rough placement, test fit this in the hole. All right, I'm gonna unwrap these guys now. I ended up making this too long, so I, I made it too short initially and then I made it too long. So I'm, uh, I'm two for two on, on screwing up already with this, with this build. Sorry, Jason. Your kit's real nice, but uh, I'm a bit of an idiot. You know what? I have a feeling that's what this is for. I could put the capacitor through here. Yeah. Fold it over like that. And then take one of the legs here and wrap it. And then take the other leg over here and do the same. And then I'll come back and cut it after I do the solder. Like that. So that's that side. Like that. So there's one side, and there's the other side. Now come back around, rejoin the wires. So it looks like we can go straight to this guy here, like that. Let's feed the wire in. Now, um, these things are pretty close here, so the legs, I'm gonna have to go in there and clean that up a bit. But the first thing I'm gonna do here is try and burn off some of this enamel too. That's probably good enough. All right, so we've got the ground line uh, is the two wires twisted together connected to the ground side. Uh, this side is where it goes to the antenna. So this wire is the same as the green wire on this, on this cabling, so the diagram. So if we touch our, one of our leads here and the other lead to the antenna wire, we should see, there it is, capacitance achieved. All right, so now we need to set up the connection for the wing nut. Now let's solder that wire in place so it doesn't go anywhere. This guy goes right over there, like that. 
you can uh, if you wanted to go with the wing nut option that way you could use a U connector instead of a round connector it doesn't really matter that much to me um, I think Jason's given us options here I don't know that he cares really how you want to connect the terminal For the heck of it though, we'll include it just in case. What do I want to do? I want to come back over here. How do I want to handle this? I may just put some electrical tape right over it. Maybe just hit it with the hot glue. Hmm. Because this is kind of just floating in the middle of nowhere, this this cable. I'm, I'm a little worried by that. Alright, so I, I've tightened this up a little bit. I'm going to wait to pop this with, with the hot glue until I have time to actually take it out. Uh, a couple of things. There is a strain relief loop here, so you can hang it. That was a, a nice addition. Uh, and wrapping it is pretty straightforward. You could cut this as you're tuning it, but it's likely he's already done the work, so I probably won't mess with it since he's done a, a good job at it, and this is really nice wire. So I'm going to wrap this up, and then I'm going to take it out, and we're going to test it and see where it is resonant and likely if there are problems it is because of how I assembled it <laughs> just to set myself up for that because that is a possibility the bungee cables for here so you you hold your wire tight like so and then you take your bungee you got it double knotted back here go over the bottom and then come into this little slot and it holds the wire in place for you Oh, KM4ACK. <laughs> Look at that. All right, I've got my KM4ACK built antenna here. I just happen to have a tree right next to me. I'm going to go a bit away from the house. I'm going to throw a, a load up into the tree with my throw line, my throw bag. And uh, we'll see if we can get this mounted up and test it out. On my, uh, on my trip, I bought this Weaver's Arborist along. And uh, this is a throw cube all right so all my throw line is in here the weights already attached I'm gonna come back a ways here and we're gonna give it a good up over and get it out as far as we can to get it up into this tree over here and the goal is to get it as high as we can up into this tree and you can see the DX commander pointing next to it so uh, let's let's give it a throw and see what we see how we do Wish me luck. There we go. Good throw. Got it way up there, perfect. All right, now I'm just gonna leave my bag here. We'll go attach the antenna line. Hoist it up. Ugh. All right. 12 ounce throw weight, got it significantly dirty so I know I'm doing the right thing. All right, tie in a sheet bend. So we're gonna have antenna come up through here, around, back through. Okay, so now we just need to uh, hoist this up. Throw a twist line on here. So it'll get hoisted up, it'll stop about right here and then I'll adjust it after. So okay, I'm gonna go around and I'm gonna pull up the line. Okay, uh, the antenna's up. We don't have any line in my hand on the other side, so I'm just gonna tie off the arborist line and we'll test it here. Very good. I had initially wanted to get uh, the end of the line back down uh, to where I could grab it in case I needed to do any tuning to the antenna. It's way up in the tree. <laughs> I guess I threw it too far, but we're still gonna check it because maybe we're gonna get lucky. That wire was pre-cut by Jason, KM4ACK. This kit uh, runs about $40 from what I saw on his website. I'll post the link in the description. Let's take a look at how we did. All right, first band, 40 meters. Hey, hey Jason. Let's see where the low point is. A little long, a little long. It looks like the low point which is about a 1.1 to 1 is at 6889 megahertz. Not bad though, <laughs> that's, uh, that's really impressive. And we can totally use that for FT8 because I believe it won't be any more than 1.5 to 1 SWR. Uh, 
to one uh, SWR as it sits right now. If I wanted to, I could pull it back down, uh, snip some of it off and then hoist it back up. That'd be the right thing to do. In fact, I may do that here in a little bit just to check it out. But let's... So if you remember from the live stream I did at the lake cabin, the KM4 ACK antenna did really well. It, I think we ran for about 10 minutes on FT8 and we had our signals picked up all the way to the East Coast at an appreciable measure. I think we were all under negative 20 uh, with five watts output, which is, which is pretty good. Now I know a lot of these are subjective terms, but basically what you can say is within a 10 minute period, I was able to make one contact very easily on the KM4 ACK half wave and fed antenna. And it, I think performed to my expectations, performed very well. The ease of setup, very easy. You just unwind the wire, get it up into the air somehow. You could use a squid pole, one of those telescopic uh, fishing poles, or you can throw it up into a tree like I did and it worked just fine for that. So good antenna to get started out with if you are looking into building an antenna for portable use. I would check out the CAM4 ACK antenna. All right, thanks so much for watching. I hope you click subscribe and click that bell because I do live stream every Saturday at 7 p.m. Pacific time. And all the links for all of our social media work on Facebook, Discord, all of that is in the description. So I hope you check that out. I'm Josh, KI6NAZ, 73.